Biomimicry is the practice of using living organisms as a model for new technology. Many of the drugs in your medicine cabinet were patterned on a molecule a plant created first. Velcro was inspired by the seed pod of the cockleburr plant, which hooks into animal fur. The strong hexagonal shape of a bee's honeycomb has inspired countless building and packaging materials. While these examples of biomimicry are well known, there are others that are equally impressive and not as widely known to the public. I spoke with science journalist Christy Hamilton about five exciting new technologies that were inspired by nature that you've probably never heard of. Space telescopes like Webb and Hubble are sending back amazing images of our universe, but they're missing some important information. These telescopes can only pick up visible and infrared light, respectively. High energy waves like X-rays and gamma rays are notoriously hard to catch, passing right through most solid objects. Enter the eyes of the lowly lobster. That black, beady little eye has millions of tiny microchannels that are mirrored, and it bounces light off of two sides and then enters its neural ganglia, it goes into its brain, it can kind of get a visual picture of the world in these really dark, murky places that it has to explore to find food. These tiny reflective microchannels are arranged in a 180 degree array, collecting dim light from all directions and focusing it onto the lobster's retina. Although it took nearly 40 years, scientists and engineers were able to copy this design using man-made materials like iridium, a reflective mineral. But their purpose wasn't to amplify dim light. The microchannels were designed to tamp down the energy of X-rays and gamma rays hurtling towards Earth from outer space. It's being skimmed off at an angle. And by doing this, it's actually building a picture that we can see, but it's not at the full straight on strength that like an X-ray photon would just beam right through the telescope. These artificial lobster eyes have already been launched into space, traveling aboard a satellite that will measure X-ray emissions coming from the planet Mercury. In the coming years, this technology should be able to give us a glimpse back into the early universe, where we can observe cataclysmic but brief stellar events like the evolution of stars, galaxies, and even black holes. It's mind-blowing to me that something in space was inspired by something that lives, you know, deep in dark waters. Gila monsters are enormous lizards that live in the American Southwest. Although they once had a reputation for having a bite that's fatal to humans, in reality, it just causes a lot of pain and swelling. This is due to the venom running through channels in its teeth. Now for the Gila's prey, pretty much anything it can fit in its mouth, this venom is fatal. But the venom also does something else that caught the eye of a New York City doctor. A scientist, um, a doctor called Dr. John Eng, he, he noticed that when a Gila monster bit, um, say like a baby rabbit, he noticed that the rabbit's pancreas would swell, would engorge. And he was like, okay, well that's where insulin is produced, so they must be doing something to this organ in the body that releases insulin. This weird thing happening with the rabbit's pancreas also helped explain how the Gila could go for months without eating food and then gorge itself without a massive spike in blood sugar. Essentially that saliva that helps them digest and moderate those huge spikes in sugar, it does also engorge the pancreas of these creatures because it releases a ton of insulin in their bodies. The doctor recognized that if the Gila's venom could release insulin in its prey, it might also help diabetics who have become resistant to insulin and have to take a synthetic form of the hormone. They looked to this Gila monster to create a better type 2 diabetes medication because diabetes medications often come with unwanted side effects. Pharmaceutical companies are still looking for a better, almost kind of softer version for these diabetic patients. Um, and oftentimes there's unwanted weight gain, which doesn't necessarily help a type 2 diabetic that is trying to lose weight. And they found that this molecule called Exendin-4, but it's, the medication's name is Bietta, 
or you know, fans of Bayetta who first heard about the correlation called the medication Lizzie after the lizard. They appreciated the side effects in the sense that they actually lost on average something like five pounds. This medication is now widely available and helping diabetics all over the world. Who could have predicted that a venom once thought deadly to humans could end up helping so many of them? Concrete is blamed for about 8% of the world's carbon dioxide emissions. And in case you didn't already know, carbon dioxide is considered a major contributor to global warming. This CO2 is generated when limestone, clay, and other materials are heated up in a giant kiln. These are the basic ingredients of cement, the stuff that binds together the rocks and sand and concrete. Fortunately, corals, the animals that build coral reefs, may hold the answer to low emission concrete. Oftentimes people forget that hard coral in the ocean is an animal just like you and I. And so when they exhale, they release carbon dioxide. And that carbon dioxide reacts with calcium in the water and it creates those skeletons that you see. Some clever engineers at a company called Biomason figured out that they could use the corals process for building reefs to make environmentally friendly concrete bricks. These bricks reduce carbon emissions by up to 99%. They use this aggregate sand and then they put nutrients, they sprinkle nutrients essentially on these bricks. And there's bacteria in these sand bricks. They're not hardened yet, there's bacteria. And these bacteria do something very similar as well. They create that um, calcium carbonate essentially between the grains of sand and they like stick all those grains of sand together. They essentially are the glue that holds it together and makes it really strong. And experiments have shown that it can really hold up to some impressive testing. Bricks created with this bio cement are currently available for purchase and the US military is looking at using this technology to create temporary runways and other structures in areas where it would be difficult to create them by more traditional methods. Tardigrades, also called water bears or moss piglets, are microscopic animals that are some of the most durable creatures on the planet. They can survive extreme heat, cold, dehydration, and even the vacuum of space. They can do all of this thanks to some neat adaptations that put them into a suspended state, something scientists call the tun state. Tardigrades have had to develop a way to essentially be dried out. If we were to dry out, all of our cellular bits, all the little like bits and pieces, like proteins and stuff inside our bodies, would just rub together and you know break apart. They would break their shape, and we would essentially die. The tardigrade can keep everything in place thanks to a sugar called tree halose. This simple sugar is found in many species of plants and animals, but not in mammals. Tree halose can keep tardigrades in suspension for more than 30 years. It freezes into this internal cast. So it almost like becomes glass and it just keeps everything in its place. So that if you had to make the equivalent with us, right? Our hearts wouldn't collapse onto our liver or anything. It would keep everything separated from each other. So tree halose is key to tardigrade survival in harsh, dry environments. But some enterprising scientists thought it could also solve a problem plaguing modern medicine. It's very hard to transport our medicines without keeping it on ice or keeping it really cold. Our vaccines in particular, they're very, very temperature sensitive. And so is there a way that we can kind of do what the tardigrade is doing and preserve these medicines, right, until they reach their desired location? And so that's what the scientists were doing. And they did find that these tardigrades created something Pretty impressive. Tree halos can now be synthesized in the lab and is being used to preserve everything from vaccines to transplant organs to stem cells and tissue samples, all thanks to a cute little animal that you can't even see with the naked eye. Spider webs have an unexpected property, which is that they emit UV light. Now you and I can't see it, but birds and other animals can. This got researchers thinking that maybe they could harness this property to make windows that reflect UV light. We have this design issue with our windows where a massive amount of birds die by window collisions. And is there a way that we can preserve our bird population and the diversity of our bird population by using maybe a unique system found in nature? Researchers tested a variety of different ways to make glass reflect UV light, which would make it visible to birds. 
this would be a great solution because humans can't see UV, right? So our windows were, would remain clear, we can see through them, but birds could see them and they would be like, nope, don't wanna go there. I'm gonna go around the building instead of smack into it, right? While these UV reflecting windows aren't perfect, tests showed they only cause birds to divert about 80% of the time. Some commercial products have come out of this research. They try to mimic both the reflective quality and look of spider webs. But as cool as this technology looks, Christy says they're actually cheaper, more effective options. Um, essentially, stickers are the best way to prevent bird collisions, but oftentimes as humans, right, we wanna have a clear view out our windows. And so it's almost this moral dilemma, right? Like, do we wanna prevent bird deaths or do we wanna see out our windows clearly? So unless you are adamant that nothing block your view, you can save the UV for the spiders. Hey, these were just some of the cool biomimetic inventions featured in Christie's new book, Nature's Wild Ideas. She goes into a lot more detail in the book, so if you'd like to know more, visit the link in the description below. Also, thanks to my patrons who made this video happen. I'll catch you in the next one.